This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. And yes, that means that I've been setting up my very own website. Using their super easy to use web design tools and templates, it's been an absolute blast. Use the offer code Sweeney or head to squarespace.com Sweeney for 10% off your brand new website. The homeland of the heathen was once the far north. From the groves and forests to the streams and oceans, they lived in isolation from their kin for centuries. Out of necessity, the wisest and strongest among them ventured out, taking with them those brave enough to inhabit the central European plateau. Their isolation had left them marked by their eyes the color of oceans and their hair made of liquid gold or the amber that the sea spat onto their shores. In times of famine, they battled the marshes, the curse of troll skin, and the flies sent by Woden to punish dishonorable men. When the famines lifted, they fought with each other for soil and till, as well as the great Roman hegemony to the south. Some barbarians would trade with the empire, and some would wage war on the silver-armored despots. The Romans, seeing the threat, would push further into the frontier beyond the Great Rhine River, which they called Germania. As mentioned on this channel, the Germanic culture was founded in southern Scandinavia, where settlers from the Pontic Caspian steppe and the Caucasian mountains had migrated. Central Europe at this time was dominated by other peoples, the largest of which were the Celts, who were being slowly conquered by the Romans from Italy. These Proto-Germans had strong cultural traditions. They had chieftains and governing assemblies called Thinga, where all free men would gather to interpret the words of the law speaker on secular matters. Religious leaders held ceremonies and rituals, and they worshipped deities such as Woden, Donar, and others. We know these in English as Odin and Thor. Proto-Germans had migrated out of Scandinavia around the 5th century BC in response to increased demand for farmland, since Scandinavia could not support the growing population. This will sound familiar to those who've seen the episodes on Denmark and Sweden, since the same would cause the Vikings to raid Europe over a millennia later. These Germanic tribes drove out or subsumed the Celts who already lived in the area between the Maas River in the Netherlands to the Vistula River in Poland. Julius Caesar viewed the Germanic barbarians as a threat to Italy and used this as well as other reasons to conquer Transalpine Gaul in order to set up a borderland near the Rhine Valley. During the Gallic Wars, the Romans began their conquest of Germania on the west side of the Rhine River which was incorporated into Roman Gaul, and then divided into two provinces in 85 AD, Germania Inferior and Superior, with the Romans founding the cities of Cologne and Mainz as imperial capitals. The lands east of the Rhine were called Germania Magna, or Greater Germany. Germania Magna was not one state, but rather several undeveloped tribal confederations who traded with the Romans at the Limes Germania, as well as the Proto-Slavic and Eastern Baltic cultures. They referred to themselves by these tribal names, but also on some occasions as Theudisk, meaning people, which would eventually form the modern words Teutons and Deutsch, meaning German. From 12 BC to 6 AD, the Roman might came crashing down on Germania Magna, conquering all the way to the Elba River under the reign of Augustus. However, a general named Arminius, a German prince captured and raised by the Romans, betrayed the Roman armies and led an ambush of the legions in Teutonberg Forest, forcing a retreat back to the Rhine River. Never again would the Romans rule Germania Magna after one of the worst defeats in Roman history. Overall, the Germans had mostly a trade and mercenary based relationship with the Romans, and many Germans even settled in the empire. But with their growing populations, they became ever more powerful and raids on the empire became more and more common. Just as the Roman frontier was weakening, a huge scale migration of Goths was happening. 
from their homeland in Sweden to the Vistula of Poland and then to Crimea and many Goths became pirates on the Black Sea. The Goths were a ferocious and powerful tribe and many other groups such as the Vandals, Burgundians, Alemanni and Macromanni pushed further into Rome to escape the Goths in the north and east. Rome struggled for many years against these tribes, barely managing to hold back the Chatti, Chauci and the Macromanni. The Goths then split into two factions, the Ostrogoths and the Visigoths. However, real large-scale invasions would be triggered by yet another force. The Huns, probably cousins of the Xiongnu, invaded Europe in 373 like wildfire, destroying everything in their path. They subjugated the Ostrogoths and harassed the other Germans and Romans alike. Soon other Germanic tribes pushed into the weak heart of Rome while fleeing from Attila and his powerful armies. The Visigoths would sack and plunder Rome under King Alaric in 455, before eventually conquering and settling in Spain. The Vandals conquered a kingdom in northern Africa and Carthage, and also sacked Rome when a political marriage betrothal was broken by Rome. The sack of the city was so wanton that vandalism came to be the word for wholesale destruction in the Latin language. The Ostrogoths revolted against the Hunnic Empire and once it collapsed also eventually conquered parts of the Adriatic coastline before settling in the Kingdom of Italy. The rest of Rome was now ripe for the picking. The Burgundians negotiated a kingdom for themselves northwest of Italy, part of the Suebi Confederation conquered the west of Spain, while the rest settled north of the Burgundians under the name Alemanni. The Franks took the lowlands and the Angles, Saxons and Utes, together with their cousins the Frisians, took Britannia, forming the basis of modern England. The whole of the Western Roman Empire had fallen to Germanic tribes, and several kingdoms were now where her provinces had once stood. Germania Magna was however still wild and barbaric, with little in the way of the institutions and infrastructure in the Roman South. The Saxons, Thuringians and Lombards still led a tribal life in the mostly undeveloped land. That is, until an unlikely new power arose in the ashes of Roman Gaul, the Franks. I recently took this channel full time, and in doing so I decided to revisit some of my older episodes to take a more serious and in-depth look at their history. Doing a series on Germany has been on the top of that list for a while, and so you can expect the same to happen with other videos in due time. In addition, I've also been building a website to act as a portfolio for my work, as a sort of digital resume. The whole process was made so much easier by Squarespace. You can check out my website in the link below, which I built using Squarespace's immensely easy to use drag and drop tools and templates to make any website look absolutely stunning. Having your own space online is essential for any business, but also are great for personal use, including use as a working space for a project or hobby, or even to help plan and remember special events like weddings. It's perfect for beginners and for advanced users, there is even the option to tinker with the coding. Now, Squarespace is offering a free trial at squarespace.com sweeney and a 10% discount on your brand new website by using the offer code sweeney at checkout. That's S-U-I-B-H-N-E to make your idea a reality. Please check it out and get building today. Thank you so much to the patrons for supporting this channel. If you'd like to show your support, you can find a link to my Patreon page down below. Like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.